Welcome back to Simply Money. Today, I'm going to be giving you the best money advice I've ever received, and I'm passing it along to you. Hopefully, you're already implementing most of these. If not, I hope you learn something that can help you toward your financial freedom. It's a process. It takes time. It takes discipline. But it is well worth the effort to get to that financial independence where you no longer have to depend upon a paycheck. You can work if you choose, but you're no longer dependent. It removes stress. It removes the chaos in your life, and it gives you the flexibility to do what you want, when you want, with whom you want. And that's the goal of this channel, is to help you achieve your financial independence on your terms to live your life. Here we go. What's the best advice I've ever received about money? You've heard it on this channel over and over. Before we go forward, stop and think and put down in the comments what you think the number one most important advice that I've received is and what you think it is in the comments and then start playing this again and see if you're right. Let's compare notes at the end and see how many people got this one right. Number one, over and over, you'll hear me say it on this channel, you need a budget. We can't get to financial independence if we don't have a budget. If we don't know how much is coming in, we don't know how much is going out, we can't get to where we're going. It is our roadmap to financial independence. People so often think of a budget as constraint, but it is freedom. It lets you know what your money is doing and you can do things without worry because you know you've set money aside. If I want to go buy a new car, I have my sinking fund for my new car. I can go buy it. I just have to be wise and disciplined and not overspend what I have saved for it. That's the key to financial independence, making every dollar work for you. Check out the link in the description below. I have a complete platform that has everything money. You can budget, you can set goals, you can set your sinking funds, you can track your net worth. All of these things are so important to know what's going on. So here's my advice to you, create a budget. Number two, set financial goals. If you don't know what you're shooting for, you'll never get there. That's like driving on a racetrack. You're just going in circles. You don't have an end destination. Are you trying to save up for a car, for a down payment on a house? for a fancy vacation, for your kid's college, for retirement, whatever the goals are, set them up. Again, the description below, there's a whole platform that offers you a place to help set your goals and achieve your goals financially and keep you on track. And in our community, we're here to support and help each other reach the goals that we set. So number one, budget. Number two, set goals. Number three, know your net worth. A lot of people think, why is it important to know my net worth? It's great to know what you have, not only in cash, not only in your budget, but your overall net worth. Net worth is simply taking everything you own minus everything you owe. If you own a house and you owe $300,000 on it, but it's worth $500,000, your net worth on that particular item is $200,000. Do that with all your savings, your retirement, your house, your car, anything of value, any asset, put down how much it's worth, put down how much you owe, and subtract that from its worth, and that's your net worth. The platform we have helps you track your net worth. It shows your progress, and it helps you keep track to reach those goals that you're after. Is your goal to become an everyday millionaire? The platform will help you track when you achieve that, taking your savings, taking your retirement, taking your house, and putting that all together. Have you reached millionaire status yet? The seven-figure net worth is a great goal to achieve. Go ahead and set your goals. Set your budget. Track your net worth. Number four, track your finances on a regular basis. You don't just set up your goal. You don't just set up your budget and then never look at it. Now, you don't want to OCD about it. You don't want to look at it obsessively every day, especially your investments in the stock market. You don't want to be looking at that every day and freaking out and worrying and stressing, but you should do regular periodic checks, budgeting on a monthly basis. Check out your net worth on a quarterly, biannual, or annual basis. Review it. Do an annual review and set a goal for the next year. Set a five-year goal, set a 10-year goal, 
but track it and check it out on a regular basis. Number five, start reading financial books. There's a wealth of knowledge out there, great people. Some of the things you don't take everything everyone says, but you take nuggets from each one. Diversify your reading. Get into people's books that they've written about finances, how to accumulate wealth, how to eliminate debt, how to build your dream life through discipline and finances. There's so many good books out there. There's a video, here's the link for it, that I've done five book reviews on. Great books to look at, to read, some of my favorite books. Check them out. They're in the link below. You can check those out. Get a copy of a book. Start reading books, knowledge. Expand your understanding of what the stock market is, what an ETF is, what a mutual fund is, what's an HSA and how does it work? What are the triple threat tr tax benefits of an HSA? What's a 401k and what's different between a 401k and an IRA or a Roth IRA? These are a lot of terms. Some people are like, I know all that, that's simple. Then deep dive into some other things or share your knowledge with people. Constantly be reading and learning and bettering yourself on your finances. Six, check your credit report. Now, once you get to the point where you can be debt free and you don't have to worry about your credit report, yes, your credit's going to drop. When you no longer carry debt, your credit will drop. And that's okay. When you're at that point where you no longer need to use debt, but when you're younger, when you're starting out, or when you're getting out of debt, you need to know your credit score because you still may need to use debt to get a house or other options. Having a good credit score can help you get an apartment or get a car at a more fair rate until you can get to a point where you can pay cash for all of these items. Check your credit score, make sure it's accurate, and call the credit bureau if need be to get it cleaned up and then make the steps to get a strong credit score. Make sure you're paying your bills. Don't allow your bills to be delinquent. These are key factors in building a strong credit report. Another great piece of advice is use an online budgeting tool. I have one in the link below you're welcome to use. There's Why Not a Budget. There's Every Dollar app. There's all sorts of apps out there. Put it on your phone. It's with you at all times. If you're not sure if you have money for something in a fund, whether it's entertainment, going out to eat, buying something you see in a store when you're out, you have your app. You can look at your budget. You can say, yeah, I have money in that fund and I want to buy this and you can do it guilt-free or I don't have the money. I'm going to start saving for this so I can pay cash for it. That's the discipline. Use the app to your advantage. Don't allow it to become a crutch. Use it. Keep it updated as you're regularly checking your finances. Make sure your budget's accurate and focus on it and use it. Another great piece of advice, build an emergency fund. You will constantly be in the cycle of debt if you don't have an emergency fund. I've done several videos on building an emergency fund, why we need an emergency fund. Check out the videos on my page on Simply Money and see why an emergency fund is so important. But if you don't have the money set aside when the car breaks down, the HVAC goes out, something happens, you need an emergency fund or you're getting the credit card and you're back in debt or further in debt. Make sure that you're doing those things on a regular basis and then set up that emergency fund as you're getting out of debt, have that emergency fund so you don't fall backwards. Here's a great piece of advice that I remember hearing years ago. And today it's so much easier. When I was younger, I had to pay myself first manually. I'd get my check and I would physically take money from my paycheck and put it in my savings or put it somewhere that I wanted it and pay myself first. Today, you can set up automatic withdrawals that your paycheck, you don't even see it, so it makes it easier to save. You can get your employer to help put the money in your 401k or even an IRA or an HSA often. Your bank can have automatic payments sent to your savings account or a separate account that you have for your sinking fund. Maybe you're saving for that down payment or for that vacation. You're paying yourself first. And the most important one is pay your future self. Set up a retirement account, even if it's $50 a month. Begin to put that in and let time work for you. Let the compounding have as much time as possible. Take a small amount and then each month add to it. Or each paycheck or each 
pay raise you get, add a little bit to it until you get to a higher point where you pay yourself and you can have that financial freedom in the future. But get out of debt. Imagine not having any debt, no car payment, no house payment, no credit cards, and all that money that you're paying toward that can be going toward the things you want, a sinking fund for the new car you want, a sinking fund for that house you want, a sinking fund for that vacation you've dreamt of, a sinking fund for your retirement. So at one day you wake up and you say, you know what? I don't want to work anymore. I'm done. I have my retirement because I started putting a few dollars in years ago and kept doing it consistently. Another great piece of advice, get the free money. What do I mean by that? If your employer offers a 401k with a match, get the match. At least contribute the amount that they match because that's free money going into your retirement. You have just doubled. You got a 100% return on your investment immediately. And then that and your contribution are growing tax-free until retirement. Free money. Get it. It's a great piece of advice. If you're not doing it, please look into your company's 401k and contribute at minimum the match. Here's another one. It goes with budgeting. A great piece of advice, kind of a sub point of the budget is save for holidays, save for birthdays all year long. Don't wait until November, December when you say, oh, I need to get all my Christmas gifts, all my holiday gifts. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I don't have that much money. And guess what? Because you feel guilty that you have to do this for your family, for your friends, whatever it may be, you go and you spend and you put it on credit cards. Now you're starting the new year, your new year's resolution. I'm going to get out of debt once again. Get out of debt, stay out of debt, start budgeting for those items year round. You know the holidays come every year at the same time. You know those birthdays come at the same time every year. Begin to save for them all year long. If you're going to spend $500 on, say, a holiday, begin to budget $60 a month, whatever it may be. Break it down per month, per paycheck, however you do your budget and have a line item for those things, birthdays, holidays. They're coming. Don't let the big once-a-year items hit you. Prepare for them. Now, here's one you may not think of. We in our country, I'm in the USA. Other countries may not be as bad as this, but the USA, we are hoarders. We have so many people that have a rental unit for storage for stuff they use maybe once a year, if at all. It's a junk closet full of stuff. I have a three-car garage with an attic. When I moved here, I thought, uh -huh, this is great. So much storage. It was packed with three kids, a wife. It slowly accumulated over years. And we finally were like, we're done. And we got rid of stuff. We donated stuff. You can sell stuff. Get on Facebook. Get on another site. Sell it. Make a few dollars of the stuff you're no longer using. And then use that to get out of debt or put that into a savings for a rainy day. Get rid of unwanted stuff. Last piece of advice. One of the greatest pieces of advice I ever received. I owe this one to my parents. I thank them for this. It's called lifestyle creep. Don't allow lifestyle creep to hit in. I did a full video on what lifestyle creep is. Check out that link there. You can check it out on our site. Lifestyle creep is basically every time you get a pay raise, every time you make more money, you spend that money, you extend yourself, you get a bigger car payment, you get more credit cards, you get a bigger house payment, you keep extending the amount of money you're spending. Instead, if I get a $1,000 a year raise, maybe I put 10% to enjoying doing some things and I put the other 90% toward savings, toward retirement. If I'm in debt, I use it all to get out of debt then I not only have that $1,000, but all the money I've been spending on my debt to use for those things when I finally pay it off. Lifestyle creep is so prevalent in our country. Check out how we have increased what we think is normal. The normal size house is bigger. Vehicles are fancier. We all feel like we have to keep up with the Joneses. Don't allow lifestyle creep to trap you into this endless cycle. Those are some of the most important pieces of financial advice I've ever received. Put them into practice. If you're not doing them, pick one. Start with one and do it consistently. Then add one. 
and become consistent, become financially independent, become financially knowledgeable. We have an entire platform with educational tools, with a community to, to help you and collaborate with and to encourage you with all sorts of links to help you get the right insurance, to help you find the right bank account, all these things. You can get a free account. We have a paid higher version, but we have a free account. Get your free member key below and check out all the wonderful tools that are there to help you achieve your financial success. This is a free opportunity. If you want to upgrade, you can. There's no obligation. You do not have to put your credit card information. There's a place when you go to the site that says skip. You skip the credit card information if you don't want to enter that, and you can use it free. Track your net worth. Get on a budget. Set goals. Find the tools you need to achieve your financial success. That's it for today's video on the best pieces of financial advice I've received, and I hope it's been some of the best for you. Leave me a comment down below, and let's reach our goals together. Thanks for joining me today on Simply Money.